Good afternoon, youth. Can you believe it? This is our third one, which means we've had to do this whole social uh, uh, separation thing for three weeks. It's getting pretty unreal, isn't it? Um, well, I hope you guys are doing well. You're getting through your schoolwork. I hope you are uh, um, staying safe and washing those hands. Um, as you can see, since I have to work from home, I was like, what's the point of shaving? So I think I'm just going to grow all this. I mean, even look at this. Look at, look at, look. I'm, I'm getting a patch again. You see that? Now, this is staying bald still. That's really weird. But I'm going to grow a patch here and here. I'm going to have like a puff once I'm done. So I'm not going to shave until this whole thing's over and we get to see you guys again. Um, so that's going to be, so you'll get to see like a Chia Pet Joe going on here throughout the next couple of weeks. Well, you know, as I wanted to promise you guys, uh, we want to keep with these dev devotions here. And even though we can't meet with, uh, with you guys tonight, um, I want to be able to just making sure you guys are getting a dose of God's word here. I sure hope that you are watching Pastor Luis's sermons on Sunday morning. Um, you're keeping up with this and maybe even doing your own devotions here. Um, I encourage you keep with with your prayer life. Um, your youth leaders, I know, are praying for you. They're going to probably be reaching out to you here, uh, you know, within the coming week, just to see how you're doing and uh, see how you are holding up with all this. But so let's just go ahead and get started with the devotion here. And I thought this was a pretty good one. It's found in James chapter one. James chapter one. All right. Now, I love the book of James. James is kind of a no nonsense, in your face person. He is actually the half brother of Jesus. Um, he was in charge of the church down in Jerusalem. I mean, he wasn't even an apostle, too. So um, after, you know, after Jesus did what he did um, and ascended into heaven, James really, um, really came to be a believer and really kind of uh, um, embraced uh, who his brother was of being the son of God. And James, he didn't mess around. And he, he was very straight up. Now, during this time when this was written, the persecution of the church started breaking out in Jerusalem. And uh, this is what James, you know, basically was telling, uh, you know, the Jewish Christians. And he says to them, he goes right here in James chapter uh, uh, two, uh, J chapter one, uh, verse two, it goes, count it all joy, my brothers, when you face, when you meet trials of various kinds. Now that word joy does not mean happy. James was not saying go woohoo, yay, we get to go through something hard. That's not what he was saying. That word joy means more of a contentment. In other words, have the right mindset. See, I think we've been talking about this the last few devotions. If you're seeing a theme, I'm trying to encourage you, a Christian has a mindset with what he is facing, that he is going to be uh, uh, content, he is going to wait for God to move, and he's going to do his best to keep his eyes on the Lord. And so this word joy uh, is more closely related to contentment. And it is uh, just saying, okay, I have an opportunity to really... Uh, work on myself here. And it says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that, that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Now, it, what basically what uh, James is saying right here, it says, he goes, look, you know, we're going to face tests. We're going to face trials. Right now, what we're going through is a trial for America, for the world, uh, for uh, uh, Christians themselves. And it just says, when you meet trials of various kinds, he goes, consider it joy, because now you could really put your faith into practice. And he says, it, it, but he's making kind of an assumption here. He's kind of alluding to something. He says, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a little bit difficult, and you're going to have to work through it. Because, but if you do, it says, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. steadfastness. If any of you could play sports or uh, musical instruments, you know that you practice, right? You, you know, if you're, in, if you're in band, you go, you practice your instrument. And you practice your scales, you practice this. Why? Because one day you're going to have a performance and all that practice is going to uh, uh, increase your ability to actually do the performance and actually uh, uh, be able to perform well. Same thing in sports. The sprints you run, the drills that you do, because one day you are going to, act, going to actually have to actually perform. And if you've been doing all those things and you've been meeting all those little tests and you've been working at it, when the day actually comes, you know, you will be strong. And this is basically what it's saying, that your faith will produce steadfastness. In other words, your faith will be strong. So these trials that we're going through do prepare you for other things in life. I know that's hard to believe that right now, this is some of the biggest things that you've ever faced uh, with what's going on in the world right now. This might be the biggest thing you ever face. It might not. But what you do right now, your attitude, how you look at things, 
will help you be prepared and help strengthen your faith if you keep your eyes on God and his word. Now it says right here, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Now this whole thing about just being strengthened, just being built, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. Right now I'm sure it's not being easy going on week three, working from home doing your school from home, not being able to get to see your friends, uh, uh, being stuck at home, probably having to do every little chore your parents are, are asking you. It's probably not easy, and you just can't wait to get out. Um, and even now with uh, us being more in lockdown, we're more restricted at home. And what James is saying, he goes, look, whatever you're going through, whatever is increasing your faith, let it have its full effect. Don't run from it. Don't have a bad attitude about it. Don't whine about it. Just work through it. Do your best to work through it. And, and, so, and there's a benefit here that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Now, we know no one can be perfect. A better word for this would have been mature. You see, it's impossible for humans to be, to be perfect, but we can mature. And when we take on these trials and these tests like we're doing in life, and we do it with a good attitude, we do it with our eyes on Christ, and we do our best to work through it, it will mature us. And many of you youth, you want to be treated like an adult. Many of you want to be able to be taken seriously. Well, it's times like this on how you act and how you move is what will produce maturity in you and respect from others. I get it. It's hard right now. So let this test continue for however long it may be and ask God for strength to be able to have a good attitude to be there for your parents to get through whatever may come from this and I'm not saying it's going to be easy and I'm not saying it's going to be fun but at the end of it as long as you are holding on to Jesus you yourself will be different mature strong you see, there's kind of there's been an old saying that I've been kind of uh, messing around with and kind of really looking out through history. Um, it used to say that you know, soft times make weak people. Hard times make strong people. I want you to think about that concept. Is that concept true? Is it not? And I want you to answer in the comments below. Answer this question: Does soft times, you know, do, I shouldn't say should, does. Uh, let me rephrase that. Does Easy times, luxurious times, having plenty we want, make soft people. And or does hard and does hard times make strong people? Think about that and answer in the comments below. All right, youth. Well, I uh, think we had talked enough for about 10, 20 minutes here. And uh, please answer those comments. I really would love to hear your interactions and see what you guys think about that. So. Uh, James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, that was the uh, verse. I encourage you to read of all chapter 1. It's a great, it's a great passage. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys again here real soon. So uh, wash those hands. And if you can, grow that hair. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right, love you.